Uh, certificates is in uh, forestry and wildlife management. Uh, what is forestry? Forestry is the science of developing, caring for, and cultivating forests. The management of growing timber. Okay. Did you know this is the management of forested land along with associated waters and wasteland, uh, primarily for harvesting timber, but also for conservation and recreation purposes. I studied it for the, you know, conserva for conservation and recreation purposes and park management where, so basically wildlife, forestry, ma wildlife and forestry management, as well as um, park management was what I studied. The harvesting and replanting of timber are the primary activities of forestry, and the main objective of uh, the main objective is to maintain a continuous supply of timber through careful, uh, carefully planned harvest and replacement. The forest manager is also responsible for the application of other land controls, including the protection of wildlife and the protection of forests from weeds, insects, fungal diseases, erosion and fire. The planned management of forests originated in early medieval Europe. Keep that in mind. The planned management of forests originated in early medieval Europe. Early medieval Europe is where it originated, where laws regulated the felling of timber and the use of forests for hunting. In 1891, the United States government authorized its first reserves of forested land. Okay. So everybody probably knows I consider myself a Theodore Roosevelt style progressive in the modern era. Obviously, if Theodore Roosevelt were alive today, he'd be thinking a little differently. And obviously, I'm not Theodore Roosevelt, though I'm a Theodore Roosevelt style progressive and I embrace the concept of new nationalism. But what about making forests stronger through active management? This is from the Forestry Service, which is part of the UN, United States Department of Agriculture. Well, you can. You can make forests stronger through active management. What you also need to understand is these same principles can be applied to any living ecological system, whether it's a forest, whether it's a desert, whether it's a swamp, whether it's a regular wetland, whether it's a pond, whether it's a lake, whether it's um, an ocean, etc., or the ocean, the whole planet can be made stronger through, through active management because every living ecological system on this earth, as far as we know, is connected. So for years, catastrophic, uh, catastrophic wildfires have threatened forests throughout the country. Wildfires have increased in both size and severity. A lot of people think this is because that they're global warming, but is it? Is it really, or is it because we ain't doing our job to clear out that our brush and that our dead timber? So, and with them, the risks to communities, natural resources, and firefighter safety, trees, grass and shrubs, whether in vast wilderness areas or in the landscaping around our homes, can all fuel forest fires. Even green trees, that's something people can't grasp for some reason, and brush can burn as quickly as dead, dry branches when stressed by drought, disease, or overcrowding. Active management, active management, active management can promote healthy vegetation, change the way wildfire moves across the landscape, or reintroduce fire as part of the natural ecosystem, working with states, tribes, and other partners in our shared stewardship. The Forest Service tries to mitigate the risk of catastrophic wildfire by actively managing the landscape and the fuels upon it, by increasing the spacing between trees and bushes, and removing dead and fallen vegetation. We can create a better chance for healthy trees and plants to withstand a wildfire. We begin by looking to nature's historic patterns. Keep that in mind, nature's historic patterns 
historic patterns to understand what the landscape would have looked like when fires started and burned as a natural part of the ecosystem. For example, in many conifer forests of the western United States, fires would have burned underneath trees, clearing out smaller brush and low branches. Our treatments in those forests are similarly designed to remove brush. So you can remove this brush not with fire, but with your hands and saws and things of that nature to remove brush small trees and lower limbs that could carry a fire on the forest floor up into the tree canopy or cr or crown once a wildland wow once a wildland fire becomes a crown fire it can move very fast with great energy and become difficult to control thinning the fuels beneath the canopy can help inhibit crown fire potential and allow fires uh, to be contained at smaller sizes. There are several ways to achieve this goal. By thinning trees, meaning taking away some of the trees and brush with chainsaws, piling fuels with dozens and uh, with, uh, with uh, dozers and excavators, controlled burns, and by employing goats for grazing, meaning grazing animals to get rid of the excess grass, methods used depend upon the terrain the amount and types of fuels to be removed. Local climate and other environmental factors, sometimes multiple methods are used in the same area, for example, piling small dead fuels and then burning those piles. Treatment, uh, treatment areas are strategically chosen based on where they can have the most impact in changing a wildfire's movement and effects or to protect locations with certain values from a fast-moving wildfire. In 2018, the Forest Service completed 2.6 million acres of fuels treatment of which 77% 2 million acres were in areas near communities. 2 million acres were near communities. You can help by managing the fuels around your home. So you can take personal responsibility for the situation at your home. Make sure you have proper clearance for the plants, shrubs, and trees around structures. Limit the amount and types of landscaping and keep your plants and grasses well cared for. More information on how to prepare your home for wildfires is available on the internet from your local USDA Forest Service office. If we all do what we can do to what we can to manage the fuels environment across all boundaries, all lands will be more resilient to wildfire mechanical treatment okay of, fo of forest fires okay fire can be good for people and the land removing fire from the landscape can cause ecosystems uh, ecosystems that need periodic fire to become unhealthy uh, trees are stressed by overcrowding, fire, but you don't need necessarily fire to do it. There are certain pine trees and such that require fire for reproduction to open the cones and whatnot, but, you know. Fire-dependent species, okay, fire-dependent species disappear and flammable fuels build up and become hazardous. The Forest Service manages prescribed burns to benefit natural resources and protect communities. However, in some places and under some conditions, it may be too difficult to safely use prescribed burning. This is where the mechanical treatment of hazardous fuels can be a valuable tool. Okay, mechanical treatment of hazardous fuels means reducing the amount of vegetation which has built up to dangerous levels or changing the arrangement of these fuels in the environment. So what this means is mechanical, meaning moving, <laughs> okay, through mechanical means, meaning you're moving things around. Think about simple machines. Reducing the probability of catastrophic fires, helping maintain and restore healthy and resilient ecosystem, uh, ecosystems, protecting human communities. This is why they do this, okay? Examples of mechanical treatment include the thinning of dense stands of trees or other fuel treatments that make an area better able to withstand fire. Such treatments might be piling brush, pruning lower branches of trees, or creating fuel breaks to encourage the right kind of fire. 
Tools that are used to carry out the mechanical treatment of hazardous fuels range from hand tools such as chainsaws and rakes to large machines like bulldozers and wood chippers. Mechanical treatment can be used on its own or together with prescribed burning to change how wildfire behaves so that when a fire does burn through a treated area, it is less destructive, less costly, and easier to control. Often mechanical fuels treatments are followed by prescribed fire to create effective hazard reduction. Mechanical treatment can also provide opportunities for woody biomass utilization by providing a renewable source of energy and wood products for local communities. What are prescribed fires? Okay. Prescribed fire is a planned fire used to meet management objectives. Okay. So basically it's okay. So an ecosystem that needs periodic fire becomes unhealthy. If there's no fire, of course, trees are stressed by overcrowding, yada, yada. So it reduces hazardous fuels, protecting human communities from extreme fires, minimizes the spread of pests, uh, pest insects and disease. Cause it kills them, removes unwanted species that threaten species of na native to the, to an ecosystem. People know my views on, uh, on invasive species. I think it's baloney provides forage for game, improves habitat for threatened and endangered species, recycles nutrients back into the soil. So when you burn trees, it releases those minerals back into the soil and as well as the organic matter. But if it's burned to straight ash, it releases those minerals right back into the soil for the plants to pick back up. Promotes the growth of trees, wildflowers, and other plants. The Forest Service manages prescribed fires and even some wildfires to benefit natural resources and reduce the risk of unwanted wildfires in the future. The agency also uses hand tools and machines to thin overgrown sites in preparation for the eventual return of fire. More prescribed fires mean fewer extreme wildfires. Specialists write burn plans for prescribed fires. Burn plans identify or prescribe the best conditions under which trees and other plants will burn to get the best results safely. Burn plans consider temperature, humidity, wind, moisture of the vegetation, and conditions for the dispersal of smoke. Prescribed, uh, prescribed fire specialists compare conditions on the ground to those outlined in burn plans before deciding whether to burn on a given day. So that more or less covers my, my uh, you, I wanted to cover forestry management to explain that as stewards of the earth, uh, it is humanity's example, humanity's role as the most evolved animal that we know of to be stewards of the earth and to work to understand our place in the universe and how we interact with the universe and the environment surrounding us. Now, I'm not a religious person. However, what's interesting is, um, so essentially what happened is uh, friends of mine that were, um, that are gerontologists, back in the like early 2010s like 2014 2015 were telling me about the uh the seventh day adventist diet which is based on the teachings of ellen g white which based her teachings on the principles outlined in genesis and the book of daniel so the principles of nutrition that ellen g white outlines are essentially, these are the nutrition principles. There's more than nutrition outlined by Mrs. White. So, and God said, behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon all the face of the earth and every tree in which is the fruit of the tree yielding seed to you, it shall be for food. Now, this is universal. As somebody that has studied a lot of philosophy and a lot of comparative religions and a lot of stuff like that, uh, I want to be clear. These dietary principles are more or less universal in every major religion, whether it's, of course, the Abrahamic religions, but also in Buddhism, Hinduism, Taoism, Sikhism, etc., with minor differences. It's also present in some of the more primitive religions. Okay, so this familiar verse of scripture is the foundation of what this person refers to as the Genesis 129 diet. God in all his wisdom, 
or nature in all of its wisdom, has made life worth living for human beings, life without pain and sickness, okay? This is the return to Eden. So, if you want, and this is, I, I see this as an allegory, and as it's an allegory. This is not, you know, I don't see the Bible as fact, but I do see this as being based on naturalistic observation, and I do equate nature with God as a pantheist, which I will get into later. But what you have to understand, if we wish to create Eden on Earth, if we want to create heaven on Earth, the first thing we have to start doing is looking at, we have to look at nature, we have to see what our place is in nature, and we have to see how to, uh, basically how to manipulate things so that we're uh, accentuating what we want to accentuate and de-accentuating